Right, back again. Um, I went out earlier today, um, uh, over into Northampton, to the shops, just to see if I could, if I could find anything to buy. Um, every time I go out, and I think oh, I'll, I'll go and buy some games, because I go into the game shop, and there's inevitably loads and loads of games that I can buy. Um, I don't get all new releases that come out because um, I really do find it hard to actually get some decent gameplay out of games because I've, I've got that many games I've got all these different arcade cabs all different consoles and I've just got I've got games coming out in the years and it, it's I suppose I'm a bit more of a collector than an actual game player and it probably actually explains why I'm crap at a lot of games uh, when I was younger, you know, going back sort of 20 years ago, and you didn't have a hell of a lot of money, and every game you bought uh, counted, and you went out, and you bought a game, and you saved up for it, and you basically played it until it was it was finished, you completed it, and then you bought the next one. I'm in a fortunate uh, position in my life now where I can just go out and buy games, and, and I don't have to sit down there and just and go through the whole game before I can buy the next one and you get a bit spoiled I think so anyway I was in the game shop I went into game and game station the usual uh, suspects there's a few games I thought oh, I'll, I'll, I might give that a blast I'll, I'll, I'll go and buy that and go and buy this and I thought you know what I'm not going to play them I'm, I'm really not going to play them I'm not playing them once to see what they look like have a quick gameplay um, uh, you know play on them and that'll be it, and it'll just be stuck in my pile, and I'll never play them again. There'll be another 40 quid down the drain. Um, I mean, it really is embarrassing, just to, uh, just to prove a point. I've got... Let's have a look here. Now, this is how bad it really is. Right, Modern Warfare 2, uh, for the Xbox 360. Awesome game, really is an awesome game. It hasn't even been opened yet. I haven't even, I, I can't believe I haven't even opened this game and even tried it yet. Absolutely crazy. I just haven't had time. I've only just, I've only just recently just completed uh, Call of Duty uh, World at War. Um, so, I, it's really embarrassing. I've got another one here that is equally as embarrassing that I haven't played yet. Force of Three. Still wrapped. I haven't even taken it out of cellophane yet. I mean, it, it's, it, it's absolutely crazy. Um, well, another one as well, which is another big hitter. I mean, these are big games that I should have at least played. Um, Gears of War 2. Again, still not unwrapped. I mean, it's, I must be mad. I must be absolutely mad. But anyway, so I... I come to the conclusion, I thought, no, I'm not going to buy I'm going to resist, I'm going to resist. I'm not going to buy another game. Which I felt like at that, um, actually having a bit of a down with things, I thought, well, I've come out, and I can't buy anything. Even though I could buy something physically, but I, I, it, it's, it's got to stop. It's really got to stop. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I was walking around, and I popped into Dougway Smith and um, I thought, ooh, I've seen a I've seen a YouTube video and I can't I can't remember for the life of me, let's have a quick look. Let's see if I remember it was off. Um, sorry about this. But somebody mentioned, I, I saw a YouTube video recently, and somebody mentioned about the video games uh, hardware, hardware handbook that was produced uh, by Retro Gamer, and it was something that was released, sorry, published, released, published, getting all mixed up now, that was published uh, late last year, October, November time, something like that, in 2009. 
I thought, well, I'll pop into the brakes with it, and just on the off chance that they've got a copy uh, left on the shelves. And lo and behold, I picked one up. Um, I thought when I actually saw the video, I thought that would be absolutely ideal that, because obviously over time, when you collect, uh, not necessarily, sorry, not necessarily collect, but when you purchase uh, gaming magazines, you know, I've, I've, I've been into gaming since the late 70s, um, uh, but perhaps uh, from the early 80s, um, uh, getting things like CMVG, etc. You um, obviously arcade, sorry, gaming machines are reviewed. You know, computers are reviewed, but actually getting a uh, getting this handbook is absolutely brilliant because it, it it's it costs nine pound ninety nine. Um, if you haven't got one and you want to know about all the consoles, computers, and handhelds, this is what this book is about from 1977 to 1999. I would absolutely recommend you go and buy it because it, 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 it's a real good reference book. And I've just had a quick flip through it, um, and it really just brings back some memories. It really does. You got things in here that's going back to like the Atari 2600, which is obviously the old uh, wood effect sort of original Atari console, and and each of the articles look like explains about uh, about the actual console, the computer itself, history of it, uh, the games, um, uh, the types of games that came out for it, and you got a perfect top, sorry, perfect ten games, and I think it does that for each of the each of the hardware platform that uh, that it reviews, but it really is a good uh, reference guide. Um, you know, especially for the people that are into retro games. And I would say it, it's actually um, sort of more of an insight to the people that, that dare I say, that are a lot younger uh, than myself. I mean, I'm, I'm nearly 40, uh, not quite yet. Uh, but I remember all these first time. And I bet there's, there's younger people that are on the scene that never experienced these sort of first time round and it and it really is really really interesting to read and I thought for 10 quid I thought I'll get more enjoyment out of reading because I will actually read a lot of that rather than buying a game for 40 quid that I'm going to you know that I'm going to use for five minutes and then just uh, stick on my pile with the rest of things but so just having a quick squint through this now we've got Intellivision I don't actually remember I remember the console itself but I never owned one I never knew anyone that owned one. Or things like uh, Nintendo Game and, and Watch Series. Um, right, okay, this is one I did own. Uh, Sinclair's LX81, and this really does bring back memories. I don't know if anybody will remember that whole setup that was in the same sort of era as me. If you can see that there. But that W8 Smith tape recorder at the top, I actually remember those as well. I, I do actually remember those. And this has got the uh, 16K RAM pack expansion. 16K. I mean, these things came in 1K of memory. 1K. And you can still get games on it for 1K. I, I mean, it was <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. Really was crazy. Uh, BBC Micro. Uh, never actually owned one of them personally, but a number of my friends did. And some of the prices of these, I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, in the day, I mean, these must have been horrendous. I mean, they really must have been. I mean, this is this is 1981 uh, for the BBC Micro, and he's talking for the Model B, 335 pounds. I mean, that's not that's not cheap nowadays. I mean, imagine what 335 pound was worth in 1981. I mean. I mean, it's 30 years ago, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, right, another one that I did actually own is ZX Spectrum. Uh, 48k one that I had of those. And again, 100, 100, £175. Christ. <laughs> 